Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today I wanted to go over batoning, um, the time and place to do it, why people do it, something that's talked about a lot, especially in the bushcraft community. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I do definitely believe it has its time and place, and I wanted to go over those situations with you today, so stay tuned. So to baton, we only really need four things. We need our knife. In this case, I'm using the Condor Swamp Romper. This is my favorite all-around bushcraft knife and the knife I carry with me the majority of the time. Wood to baton. Um, in here, I just got a piece of birch, probably three or four inches around, a piece of maple, about an inch, and another piece of maple, about two inches in our baton and this is just another piece of maple cut from the same tree some hard heavy wood to strike the back of our knife and then a wooden stump or a wooden anvil so to speak um, to prevent our knife from either going into the dirt or going into a rock or something like that you never want to baton on the ground uh, you don't want to damage your blade you also never want to baton the back of your knife with another piece of metal you can run the risk of breaking your blade chipping it, having pieces fly off. Uh, it's just all around a bad idea, honestly. <laughs> you always wanna have uh, a piece of wood as your baton. You want something heavy and preferably a hardwood, like a maple or an oak, um, ash, hickory, something like that. Um, obviously the wood you're batoning, base that off of what you're doing with it. Something like this birch here, I would probably baton this to create either a fireboard for a bow drill set a cup. Um, this piece of maple here, I would probably baton this to either create a spoon or some sort of eating utensil, maybe a toggle. And then this piece of maple here, I would probably baton something like this if I was going to make a, uh, a bow drill handhold or something of that nature, or again, maybe a, eat a larger eating utensil. So to get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about just how we would baton. So when we're gonna go baton, we wanna make sure our knife has at least an inch or two of clearance here from the actual piece of wood we're batoning. You never want your knife to be all the way in the piece of wood where there's nothing to hit or you're only hitting the tip of your knife. It's either gonna get stuck or get damaged. So you never want that. Even this piece right here is a little big. This knife's only about four and a half, five inches. We could get away with something like this, but ideally, you want a large amount of clearance, something like this, because that's gonna give you a much better striking surface for your baton. And you're just gonna be striking the back of your knife uh, with your baton, keeping it as straight and level as possible and focusing on just splitting the wood straight down. So let's do some examples. All right, to get started, we're gonna use our small piece of maple first. Now we're gonna to wanna to take it, ideally the flattest side possible with our stump. See how this one kinda of hangs off to an angle here? This one's a little more straight up. We're gonna want that. It's gonna help us split with the better grain and split more safely. You wanna split with the grain. So if you split with the grain, it's gonna split a lot more easy, easily as compared to splitting against the grain. So for that, I'm gonna be splitting right here, even though it has some dry cracks right there. So we're gonna take our baton and strike the back of our knife. And you can see how it's splitting right down the center there. I still have ample room to strike my knife and I have room for my hand that it's not directly under my striking surface. Perfect. All right, and now something like this, we could turn into a spoon, or again, a bow drill handhold or something like that, a utensil. If we uh, only had wet wood to make a fire, this wood will be dry even when the outside is wet. So this would be great feather stick material as well. So this is a perfect example of like why we'd baton if Again, utensil, uh, we only had wet wood, or we needed to actually create something with the wood. So we're gonna set those off to the side here. I'm actually gonna put those on the ground. Now let's try something larger. 
like this piece of maple. Again, we're gonna go with the grain, which is running this way this time. So actually, just for my own sake, I think I'm gonna line it up this way. I apologize, I'm trying to figure out the best way it's gonna look in the camera for you. Obviously now this piece is a little harder, so it's not gonna be going through as easily. And it looks like I hit a knot. That's not a big deal. I can just tap the back of my knife to even it back out. And you'll run into that with these harder pieces of wood. That's not a big deal. Just play it safe. Give light taps to even your knife handle back out. Nothing crazy. Boom. All right, so you can see here, let me get a better view for you guys on that. We had hit a couple knots while we were batoning, which was why my knife was starting to go wonky. I decided to keep filming through that. I wanted to show you guys that can happen. Um, it's not a big deal, just I like to give my, the back of my knife very light taps just to even it back out. Now, if my knife was to get stuck, I would use something like this, what I call a pocket wedge. And now this is simply just a piece of maple that's been carved down in a sort of pyramid style point, and it's been fire hardened. I just take my lighter, run it over a few times. That helps prevent fraying and cracking carve over the top here so it doesn't mushroom out and if this was stuck say our knife was stuck right here we could take this and baton it into the wood and that helps open the grain up so we can get our knife out and split our wood safely a very small stick another example of how we would baton now, in a situation where I was doing something small like this, I would probably just take, I'll use this one, um, a smaller baton. It's gonna be quite a bit safer, a lot easier to handle. Just give it some light taps and boom, there we go. This fat wood in sizes like this is really, I mean, that will go up in a heartbeat with a lighter, shave down for a ferro rod. So this will also help you if you don't have a great selection of wood for starting a fire, batoning is gonna be a really good opportunity for you because you can see here, just off the pieces I did, we have some small sticks, medium, and I could even baton, you know, something like this down further. So now we have four different sizes of wood and I could continue to baton down really as much as I wanted to, depending on what kind of fire I needed and what kind of conditions, as well as maybe the size of the spoon I wanted to create or the size of the bow drill handle, something of that nature, the size of the toggle I wanted to create if I was making deadfalls or trap stakes or something like that. So yeah. There's a, uh, there's a short rundown of batoning with some examples. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Um, again, I generally don't baton very often, but it has its time and place, generally in creating tools, fire, or, you know, limited resources, things like that. If you're in an area with a lot of large deadfall and not a lot of small sticks, or, you know, there's a million different scenarios that could come up. But with limited resources, batoning is one more tool you'll have to create more with less. Uh, some key points from today is make sure that you have about an inch or two of room on the tip side of your knife to baton with, so you're not batoning directly on the tip, as well as getting your knife stuck in the log if you have nowhere left to hit. A pocket wedge is a great way to deal with a knife that gets stuck. 
It's simply an addition of a, a slanted splint-like piece of wood that is hammered down in to help separate the grain so you can loosen and free your knife. If your knife starts to get off kilter, a few light taps on the back of the knife is just fine to even it back out depending on how aggressive the knot or whatever you're stuck on is. Always baton on a piece of wood or some sort of soft absorbent anvil. You don't want to baton on the ground or a rock. It can damage your knife. Always have your physical baton made out of wood so you're not striking your knife with a piece of metal or steel or something like that or a rock. It will damage your knife. Uh, it's going to pose risk to you and others around you. And Get out and practice it you know it's it's one of those things where it's a good skill to have but until you've done it 20 or 30 times it's going to be a hard one to truly understand i appreciate you watching this video throw me a like if you enjoyed this video those help a lot get my information out there don't be afraid to comment videos you would like to see in the future subscribe for more content follow me on instagram it's the same name it's uh, blue oak bushcraft and one last thing before I go, I don't believe I went over this earlier. If you're gonna be batoning with a knife, you want it to be a full tang knife. And what that means is that the handle is either riveted or somehow connected to the blade, but the blade goes all the way through and around the handle. And you can usually see that in that dark line of steel here that goes all the way around. You want your blade to be one piece as compared to something like a rat tail or even worse, where the blade is just epoxied into the handle and there's nothing else there in the handle that's blade. These are gonna be the strongest, most reliable and safest knives to use. You do not wanna use a rat tail or any sort of partial tang for batoning. You only wanna use a full tang knife. Now with most bushcraft knives now, that is something you're gonna see, but if you have like a Mora, some of the moras are rat tail, um, like carving and smaller knives are usually rat tail. You never want to baton with something like that or any sort of folding knife. That's just going to be asking to either break your knife or hurt yourself. So I just wanted to add that into this video. Um, always, always, always have a full tang knife for any sort of batoning. And in my opinion, always have a full tang knife just off the bat. Or across the board, but that's just my opinion. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day.